And uh, this here is uh, a short story that I wrote when I was um, in jail for the first time. Um, and I've edited it a few times, and I consider it to probably be the best prose work I have finished at this point in time. So this is a story that I call 74. Marco, the doctor yelled from behind the door of his office. Yes, sir, his assistant shouted back, leaning in close to it. He knew better than to open it without permission. Get a needle and get me a patient ready, stat. I think you're going to find this quite interesting. Marco ran to his desk in the corner of the main operating room where the majority of Dr. Ward's experiments took place. Quickly producing a syringe from the top drawer, he dashed back to the door and yelled in, What number? 74. Marco ducked his head down to the keyhole and saw Dr. Ward pacing back and forth, murmuring to himself while clutching something small and unrecognizable in his hands. Though curious, he didn't delay in crossing the room and shouldering his way through the free swinging double doors at the other end, returning a few minutes later with patient number 74 strapped to a gurney. Marco wheeled it to the center of the room, then wheeled Dr. Ward's stainless steel equipment table next to it, removing the syringe from between his teeth and placing it beside the doctor's forceps. He nervously pulled out a flask from his back pocket and took a long gulp before stowing it in the drawer of his desk. If Dr. Ward said something would be interesting, it usually meant he'd need a stiff drink before even beginning to think about it. He approached the office door and knocked gently. Come in, Dr. Ward commanded. Marco walked in and found the doctor staring at him through a few feathery wisps of his shoulder-length charcoal hair with his face bowed toward several lines of cocaine on his desk. He snorted one and gave a violent grin. Have some, Marco. I know you've been working hard. All of Marco's skinny frame bowed to him, then crossed the room and took a line to each nostril. Dr. Ward smiled and said, Okay, you're ready. Ready? gasped Marco, his eagerness and terror both magnified as the cocaine began to kick. Dr. Ward dug into his lab coat pocket and produced a small glass vial containing perhaps a gram or so of orange powder. This, said the doctor, is the result of the last six months' worth of work. Through some low-dose self-experiments, I've determined some bizarre effects from this substance. Although I plan to develop it as a street drug, I think I might have stumbled across something much greater. Marco's eyes were wide with bewilderment. What do you call it? I'm still working on a name, but for now, it's Mindfuck. Dr. Ward put the vial into his breast pocket and took Marco back to the gurney. Then, after looking over the equipment, approached the marble-topped counter along the wall by Marco's desk, turned a gas valve, and with the striking of a match, he lit a Bunsen burner. Tossing the still-burning match into the sink to his left, he pulled a cigarette from the pack on Marco's desk, leaned in towards the flame, and lit it. Marco watched all this with nervous anxiety that peaked when Dr. Ward made his way toward the patient. Pulling madly at the cigarette, he spoke. Patient number 74. Do you know why I chose this one, Marco? Marco shook his head. He suddenly felt as if his mouth was paralyzed. He wanted a cigarette badly, but found that his legs wouldn't budge either. Because, said Dr. Ward, ashing on the floor, he's had a full frontal lobotomy. Do you understand these implications? Marco's eyes grew wider, but he only shook his head. This man has had the front half of his brain removed. He is incapable of thought. He possesses the capacity to live only by maintaining the most basic of human functions. He is even unresponsive to all external stimuli. Observe. He turned his half-burnt cigarette downward and placed the ember on 74's hand. The smell of burning flesh filled the air, but the man didn't even twitch. The terror in Marco's eyes was masked only by the look of shock on his face. What the doctor saw was nothing more than a subject for study, while Marco saw a man in his mid-thirties with light brown hair and a week's worth of stubble on his face. He saw a human, pathetic, weak, and helplessly alive. Dr. Ward's hand slid into the right pocket of his lab coat, then dove into his left, followed by a frenzied padding down of his pants pockets. Panic was recognizable in his face only for a moment, but then became calm when he found the vial in the breast pocket of his shirt. Now watch carefully, he said, picking the cigarette up from 74's arm where he had left it and placing it back between his lips. He removed the rubber stopper from the top of the vial and set it on the equipment tray, then picked up a pair of forceps. Again, he walked over to the counter and proceeded to use the forceps to hold the vial with its base just above the burner's flame, and the orange powder quickly became a liquid. 
removing it from the heat. With his free hand, he picked up the syringe and filled it full of the liquid. Marco winced as the doctor plunged the needle into 74's forearm. Then, his disgust became sublime interest as he saw the corner of the man's mouth move in a tiny, isolated spasm. Marco had just begun to mouth, What in the... when the patient's whole body tensed. Dr. Ward picked up a scalpel and placed it just above the cigarette burn on the man's arm. Marco noticed that the doctor's hands were shaking badly. With one quick swipe, 74's arm began to pour blood and flex against the restraints. Dr. Ward's excitement was all too apparent, for rather than undo the straps just below the shoulders and right above the waist, he slit them both with the scalpel. He cut the abdominal strap first, and the bleeding arm shot into the air, making a fist. As he cut the second, the man's body sat upright. How did you... Marco began. But Dr. Ward already knew the question and cut him off with the answer. By accident. 74 hadn't opened his eyes yet, but was feeling around for something to grasp in his hands. He was momentarily satisfied when he found one of the cut straps and was content to pull at it for no apparent reason. How's it work? asked an astounded Marco. It's complicated. The doctor paused. Besides, I have no fucking clue. Both turned to 74, who had advanced to chewing on the strap. Dr. Ward flashed a devilish grin, thinking about cutting that last strap. What do you think? Is it safe? The doctor's eyes flashed, but he remained silent. And that alone was enough to answer Marco's question. You got any more of that coke, Marco asked. Dr. Ward cleared an area on his equipment tray and cut them both a line. After two long snorts, Marco stared at him through glazed eyes. All right, let's do it. When the scalpel slashed through the last strap, 74 noticed immediately. Although he didn't move his legs, his mouth opened and allowed the chewed end of the strap to drop, dangling helplessly from his clenched fists. He emitted a low groan and then fluttered his eyes a few times. Slowly, they worked their way from a squint to fully open as he became accustomed to the light. Dr. Ward stared with a sense of accomplishment, while Marco stared purely in wonder. He was shocked at how much less human 74 looked now that he was awake. 74 was looking around the room with expressionless eyes. They danced from object to object, but returned to Dr. Ward and Marco every few seconds. How's it doing that? It's, it's not possible. It's possible, just very improbable. At any rate, it isn't him in any traditional sense. It's the drug. Every trace of him was removed six months ago. There was a moment's silence as Marco absorbed this fantastic notion that was shattered with a crash when 74, trying to dismount the gurney, sent himself spilling onto the ground as the gurney fell on its side. He lay motionless for a few seconds, then picked himself up and proceeded to stand unsteadily, yet remarkably on his own. He was face to face with his two observers, narrowing his eyes as if in an attempt to see them better. Marco took two steps back. Being unaccustomed to the field of medicine, this unprecedented discovery was almost too much for him. Dr. Ward, on the other hand, picked up his scalpel and took a step forward. Holding the blade directly in front of 74, he turned it in his hand to make it glisten in the light in an attempt to draw attention to it. This was successful, and 74 made it grab for the blade, then withdrawing after his palm closed around it. Blood poured from his fist, but his face, devoid of any emotion, showed no lasting recollection of pain. Again, 74 reached out his hand, but this time only touched the razor edge of the blade with his index finger, gently enough that only a thread of blood appeared from a minuscule cut. Dr. Ward beamed while Marco gave only a numb stare. He hadn't made the connection that the doctor had and saw this only as a pathetic sign of his mindless state. Abandoning this self-injury routine, 74 formed a circle around the toppled gurney by walking around and around and around it. Although still far from graceful, with each lap he built speed as well as losing the stiffness to his movements. After nearly five minutes of this, he broke from the circle, his interest drawn elsewhere. It, was only a minute for Do- it took only a minute for Dr. Ward to realize what 74's eyes were fixed on, the flame that danced atop the Bunsen burner. 74 approached it unblinking and placed a finger about two inches from the flame. Dr. Ward counted as he held it there and reached five before it was pulled back. Both the eyes and the grin of the doctor grew wider. Without giving 74 a chance to divert his attention, he dashed back to Marco's desk, picked up another cigarette, and then held it in front of 74's face. Just when the patient's bloody hand reached for it, Dr. Ward pulled back. He thrust the end into the fire while 74 watched attentively. 
Taking a couple drags on it, Dr. Ward held the cigarette out towards 74, making sure to put the ember at 74's eye level. It succeeded in consuming his attention, and after a few seconds of staring, he touched the ember with a bloody finger as Dr. Ward counted aloud once more. One, two, before it pulled back.